10,000 men in our town, one single mustache. And it has to be on my dad. It makes my stomach hurt. What kind of mustache? A big one. All right, let's begin with this talk with a mustache, a big one. We're gonna draw this mustache with pure CSS today. Are you guys with me? So in regard to CSS, everything has to be in this box model. So in CSS world, you cannot really think outside of a box because literally everything has to be in a box. That's why not many people are as enthusiastic as I am about drawing stuff with pure CSS. But today I'm telling you that we are gonna work inside the box and somehow transform a single div element into this mustache shape. Uh, I want to give a few points out as the common knowledge ground before we dive into live coding, and I'm pretty sure you guys are all very sassy about CSS, uh, so just bear me with me for a second. The first thing I want to point out is one single div comes with three visual elements, aka three boxes, for us to manipulate uh, with the help of pseudo elements before and after. Second is that shadow could be of any color, and multiple shadows can be casted by one single object. Like so, you have, I, we have many, many shadows all in different color here, and draw to draw this keyboard, colorful keyboard. And third thing is border radius can be defined individually for each corner and all be different for each corner. And fourth thing is, Borders are not always a rectangle shape. Its shape changes according to the adjacent border setting and the border radius setting of the two corners. Like for example, you see the up, we don't have border radius, but down we have border radius and you have a very curious shape uh, of a border which you can manipulate and get interesting results. So let's now dive into live coding. As I said before, the, for the HTML, we're just gonna have one single div and I'm gonna add a class name to it, mustache. And we're done with HTML for, for, the, for the rest of this coding session. And we can close it for now. And now with the, with the style sheet, first thing we're gonna try to do is to draw two circles. Um, and circles are fairly easy to draw, we just have a rectangle and add border radius 50% 50 to it. So let's, let's begin. Have a width to 180 pixel and height to 180 pixel. I made the measurement 30 times larger for this presentation so that it's easier to see. And then we have border radius 50 percent. Um, and I'm also going to have position absolute because we want to have easy control of each element's placement and doesn't interfere with other elements' placement. And the position absolute is good for this purpose. And then I'm gonna define a color to be black. And we're gonna refer to this color with a CS trick called current color. The, the benefit of doing so, um, let me show you how to do that. Background color, we we'll just say uh, current color. And we're gonna keep doing this because uh, the benefit is that if we want to change the color of the whole icon, we can only change it once here for the color and the area where else is referring to this color so we don't change like in multiple places. So now let's refresh. Now we have a circle. But did I mention we need two circles? Uh, and like I said, we only have three elements to manipulate with. So I don't want to use another pseudo elements. It has to be reserved for other parts. So how do I make another circle without using a pseudo elements? Uh, I'm gonna use box shadow. Since we already have a circle, and the shadow of a circle will also be a, sh a circle. And you can have any, as many shadows as you want. So we're just gonna have two box shadows. Here we go. The first one, uh, first value is X offset, and Y offset 240 pixel, and spread to be zero, and blur to be zero because we want them to be the exact same size and uh, sharp edges, so no blurriness. And the color, uh, I will send, uh, set it to current color. Um, and then we're gonna continue to have another box shadow. Um, third, uh, second one, the X offset is 300 pixel and uh, 240 pixel as Y offset, zero sp spread and zero blur, current color. I hope it doesn't do that every single time. 
Now we have two circles, just with one single element. Uh, now we actually don't need the main object to show up, we just need the shadows. It's kind of creepy, huh? It's like a horror movie, you just see the shadow of the murderer, but you don't see the murderer. So we're just gonna remove, you know, you don't, we don't need you guys. Go, go away. So we, we now have like a just two circle. Uh, next thing is the main part, that's we're gonna draw the, the curved shape, shape of, of, the, of the mustache, but how do we do that? Uh, everything has to start with a box, so let's just start with a box using uh, before pseudo elements. And give it a width and height. And as you roll, oh, I, I forgot, we need to, to set the content to be an empty screen for a pseudo element to show up, and as you roll, we're gonna have position set to absolute, so that we can control them very easily. And here I'm gonna try to draw this curve part with border button. Uh, so I'm just gonna add a border button. Oh. To be solid, and 180 pixel thickness, and current color as a color as well. To make it easier for you guys to see, I'm also gonna make the, the box, the main box show up by adding a, a temporary red background color. We're gonna remove them eventually. So now, like, just to recap, um, the red part is the main box, and the black part is a border button. And what we want to, is to somehow curve, curve the, the black part up so that it becomes like the left part of the mustache. How do we do that? We're gonna use a border radius set to just one corner. Remember, we can only set, we can set any corner to any value. So we're gonna only set to the bottom left corner. So let's just get some value and see what happens. Border radius. It's going clockwise, so the first one value is top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. So we want to set the, the fourth value to be, let's just try something like 100 pixel and see what happens. So it's now curved up, but it, we should go further. Uh, the height of the black part is 180 pixel as we set it, so it can at least go to 180. So let's try that and see what happens. Refresh. So now the curve is go all the way up to the top edge of the black part, but it doesn't go beyond. What we want is to it actually go beyond and curve the whole thing up, maybe to, to the top edge of the red rectangle. That's what we want. So let's just go extreme and set it to 100%. Awesome, so that's, that's what we need. We're already getting very close and we don't need the red part, let's just get rid of that. And next thing is we are gonna try to move this part on top of the left circle, just exactly on top of it. So we just add a little left value to be 30, top to be 120. So here we go. Uh, now what's left is just to rotate them. Let's see if, as if, if this is that simple. So let's just rotate them. Add a little transform, rotate, and negative 40 degree, and see refresh. Didn't go as planned because the rotate center was not the center that we wanted. What we want is that it, it rotate uh, center around the center of the circle, but it's not, right now it's not that. So we just need to set transform origin to, to the right side and to the top should be 210 pixel. And let's see if that works. Now it's, per, it's kind of perfect, it just rotate a, like, around the circle and we can try by like, changing the value up and down and see like, what happens, 40, you just go around like this. It's really good because later on we want to animate them and we want them to do in this behavior, rotate. Look really like this, not like a crazy person, or a crazy mustache. So now we just, we have most of them already. We just need to mirror the bif before and then copy, paste them for the after and change everything uh, just to be the other way. So it's just copy and paste and change before to after 
And um, one thing we need to change the border radius is not applied to the button left, it should be button right. So we're just gonna change the third value to 100% and fourth back to zero. And um, let's see, let's do that one by one. So now, now it's, 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 it's right, but the rotate is to the other way. It should be positive 40 degrees instead of negative. And the transform origin also need to be on the left side. So just change the left, uh, change, change the right to the left. And then like we have it there, we just need to move to the right. So we're just gonna change the left value to 330. And before I do that, I want to move them a little to the center. So I'm just gonna add a little left to the main object. So like when I refresh, it's in a good place. Voila, we have a mustache now. Is that fun? We only take, what, seven minutes to do, to do that. And I hope everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So I hope everyone sort of pick up, pick up a little trick and to show your friends after the conference. So this is me, as, as introduced, I am, I, I, I love a lot of things. I love humor, I love typography, I love icons. I'm a huge type nerd, but I, I also like Procrastination. Procrastination is petting something. It's watering a plant, it's doodling. Procrastination is trying to grow a mustache. But obviously I cannot grow a mustache, so instead I draw a mustache out of pure CSS. And I was so procrastinating, I didn't just draw one, I draw 512 icons with just pure CSS. Uh, since I'm a master procrastinator over the years, and my thesis was about procrastination, I have learned something about procrastination, and sometimes w what I need to do is to tell myself if something, this is a trick, remember, if something takes less than 10 minutes to do, just do it right away, so you stop procrastinating. Like, I can take out the trash under 10 minutes, I can call my dentist, or, or I can learn some CSS. That's what I find this material that I made is perfect for this beginner to learn some uh, CSS trick within a really short time frame. And has, the content is, is condensed, and also there is immediate satisfaction, and that's what's important in self-learning to keep you motivated. So I spent a lot of time making a website, a web app, to host all 512 icons. Uh, in a web app and sort of made it in a way that it is helpful for other people to learn from it. And I'll show you how it works. So this is an app. You can click on any icon to activate a right panel. The internet didn't work. Oh, it works. So uh, you can activate the right panel. It will show you the HTML code and the CSS code. You can copy them by clicking on this button. And what's cool is that a lot of people didn't find the logo type are also just pure CSS, and you can click on them. And you can see how to draw an S out of CSS with one single div. And also you can hover, you can mouse over the code block and see which part of the code is drawing which part of the icon. So that you can sort of dive in and see how this thing, crazy thing works, or not so crazy to those sassy people. Um, and then you can, if you are, want to learn more, it's very important for you to get your hands dirty so you can try it on, on CodePen. So when you click on CodePen, it will just migrate all the code to CodePen and you can start like, changing values or made it, made it into a new icon. And one of the benefits of having your icon in CSS is that you can animate them. Uh, that's the main reason I started doing this because I saw a very cool icon animation over, uh, over other people's website. So I want to touch that as well. I'm, I start building but haven't finished this animation playground for CSS icon. Uh, you can hover over the animate, also pure CSS, of course. And you can, sort, you can pick any two icons, and icon A and icon B, and then you can play the animation, any animation. It's very crude because this is the default animation, uh, but, but that's a good start. You can start from here and add some custom-made keyframe animation and make them really, really, really amazing. You can go back and forth and also continue on CodePen. Uh, to show you what kind of animation I want people eventually be able to use this future version of this animation pro playground to, to make, I, did, I, I, 
I create a little code snippet uh, for our mustache icon. Let's review that. It's very simple. It just have. Let's crank it up a little bit. Very simple. Just shake left, shake right, uh, and then it's applied to the before and after pseudo elements. It's gonna shake it. So let's just copy the code to what we were working on before, and see if it works. <laughs> now we have like a crazy talking mustache. The animation, I love animation. The animation credit goes to me and my Mutant by Tori Cove and Procrastination by John, John Kelly. And uh, the, the typeface credit goes to Acumen Pro White by Robert Slimbatch. And the, and the right side, the, the, the model space coding typeface I use in all my code example and my code editor is a typeface I'm working on called CS Mono. I have designed a lot of features to make it specifically to typeset uh, CSS code in your code editor. You can check it out on css-mono.wenting.co. Uh, um, it will be free to download when it's ready. And you can follow me on Twitter, design jokes. And thank you so much.